Hi, my name is Philip Brunton and welcome to Jazz Play lesson number three. Now I assume you can play everything from lesson number one and two fluently as these are very important building blocks for your success. So today on lesson three we've introduced the major six sound and a major six chord. We have a major six interval. Add that to a major chord and it just adds a little more color. And that's because of this relationship between the top two notes. You hear that? It's a little bit of a clash, but it's a nice sounding clash when you hear it with this. So the distance between the top two notes is a tone. If you had a semitone, now it would really clash. So that tone is a, it's a nice color to add to the chord. So that's a major six chord. Now we're going to start as we did last time with a review and it's the same thing we did last time. It's the first three notes of every chord in a cycle of fifths. But we talked about last week how when we put two bars together we get six notes of a scale. And you'll look at there and you'll see the distance between the first two notes is a tone, another two note, the next two notes is a tone, and then as we resolve to the next bar it's a semitone. So you'll get to know the sound of that tone and tone and semitone. Okay, so let's have a tuning note before we begin. Concert A, 440. Okay, so now we're going to start with the review. First three notes of each chord, cycle of fifths. So it's a nice warm-up, and I'm sure you're really good at that now. So because you know it so well, it's really useful to start looking at the chord symbol rather than the notes there. And you can get to know C a chord symbol, you know immediately what the one, two, three is of that chord. Okay, exercise one today, we're gonna play our major six chords. So we have our one, three, five, and then a tone above the fifth gives our sixth note. Exercise number one, major six chords. I play, then you play.
Okay, exercise number two, same as before without the gap. Exercise number three was cycle of fifths. Are you getting used to those major six chord sounds? Let's look at the top of the second page on the worksheet. We've already learnt from the review exercise the first six notes of a major scale. So you can see the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth notes there. When you play the first note together with the chord, it sounds great. It's part of the chord, so of course it sounds great. When I put the second note with it, isn't that a lovely colour it adds to it? But it sounds great. It adds more color or more character. Here's, if I just have the third, you can hear the third. Obviously, it's part of the chorus, so it sounds great. Now, watch what happens when I add the fourth. Oh, not so good. Okay, so the fourth, we're going to know that the fourth on a major sounding chord is going to be what we call an avoidance note. A little more about that in a moment. And let's hear the fifth. That sounds great. And the sixth, we already know. We love the color. I personally like that, that second. We we'll also call that the ninth. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so we have our avoidance note. That's the semitone clash between the fourth and the third note. The third note is the most important part of that chord, it gives that major sound, and we clash too or close to it. It doesn't work. So, so avoidance note doesn't mean you have to completely avoid it. What I love about jazz, every note is accepted in some way. It might just be tension and then release of tension. But when it, the, there's a rule saying that when a note is one beat or longer, it'll be heard in context of the chord vertically. And when it's shorter than a, a one beat note, it's heard more horizontally as part of the melody. So it's that vertical and horizontal relationship that's really important. We're going to talk more and more about what makes a great solo, but the first thing we learned from already in the first two lessons is the two bar and four bar phrase structure that we're using in call and response. That's really important to develop for your soloing. The next thing we want to talk about just a little bit is that melodic harmonic relationship or the vertical, the chord, and the horizontal melodic relationship of notes. So when you choose a note, if it's a long note, it's heard in relation to the chord. And so if I play that chord and I put the fourth in there, it's not going to sound good. But look what I've done, I've resolved it. So again, tension and release the tension. 
Now, when it really works, if you have just quicker notes, it can be part of a passing tone, which we talked about last week. So I might have something like um, in the chord. Um, you didn't even notice any problem with that note. So as a passing tone, it's great. So any quick notes, you can play the avoidance note. Any long notes, I'm not saying don't play it, just know you're gonna create a lot of tension and then you might wanna resolve it. The only thing you shouldn't do is when you hear that tension, don't stop, okay? Don't give up, just move to another note and then it will never sound wrong. So when we're starting to improvise, how do we avoid that clash? The secret is, use a scale that has no semitones in it and that gives us a pentatonic scale. So you see at the, the last bar of the first line, second page, we have a pentatonic scale, which is basically the six notes of a major without the fourth note in it. So you have the first, second, third, five, and six, and we learned that they sound fantastic together with the chord. Now the use of pentatonics have been used throughout history in music of all cultures. There are many different kind of pentatonics, but we're talking here about the major bass pentatonic. Okay, so which you build from the major scale. It's very important to get these notes internalized. It's, we want them as fluent as possible. Imagine you have, uh, you're have you not very good at a language, you're just learning a language. You're not going to be a great poet in that language, but with a language that you're really fluent in, you can be a poet. Our first exercise with the pentatonic, exercise four, is going to get the pentatonic solidified into our fingers. We're first going to just work on the first five notes. And I have a little system I use quite often to get the notes internalized. We're going to play it slow, one beat each note, and then twice as fast, and then twice as fast again. And it's important that each stage, slow, medium, and quick, is going to be perfect before you go on to the next. So we're going to play it with a bossa nova style, which is going to give us straight eighths, or quavers in the UK. So this is the pentatonic workout, exercise number four. Thank mm -hmm. you. a real workout. So if you find the last bar with this quick notes are, are too difficult you can just play three bars and then rest for that and then gradually build up the final one. That'll also give you a little, little break. Uh, another option you can do is just play the third bars, work down the third bars or, the, or just the first two bars, work your way down the page. If you're really good at it go for the fourth bar only. Just play straight through the fourth bar. 
So you get passes like. <laughs> Okay, so you can work your way through it and you really get to know them, solidify those notes into you. Um, we're not going to play solos just full of these fast runnings, but there's going to be a fluency within your language that you become a great poet. Okay, it's time for your improvisation now. So this is our final week of two-bar column responses. Now we've got our five notes of a pentatonic. Now as I said, pentatonic is great for improvising with because you can play it over different chords so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, I'll play two bars again, you play two bars. We use the whole five notes. You don't have to play all five notes when you're improvising, but you have the option to use up to those five notes. Now each line is going to repeat. The first time we play the, through the first line, as we play the first line, it's usually using one chord. So it's a major six chord. But then you're going to repeat the first line and you're going to hear different chords. And you'll be able to work with your choice of pentatonic notes and listen and say, and just be perceptive to the chords going underneath that melodic and harmonic relationship. Don't worry, if there's a note that doesn't sound right, the only thing that's wrong is if you stop. Just resolve the tension. Okay, so again, we're going to go in a Latin style so you can make use of some semi quavers if you want and, and straight eighth notes or quavers as in the UK. I'll remind you in this one we're using the cycle fifths and it's also worth noting up for the first three worksheets I've just been keeping all your notes regardless of what instrument within the staff range. Eventually next week actually we're going to be exploring a greater range of your instrument for these pentatonic scales as we do inversions. So um, just today you can stick to those that range or if you want to introduce a few of the higher or lower notes you're welcome to. Okay here we go improvisation we repeat each line twice. I play two bars, you play two bars. On the repeat, you'll hear different chords. And just use your perception of the melodic and harmonic relationship. How do those notes sound? Don't worry if you play a note that clashes. Remember, it's just tension and then release it by moving to another note.
seven. style, that bossa nova style. It goes, okay, now, as I say, we've kept the notes within the staff range. Next week we'll be exploring the larger range of your instrument with our pentatonics. Um, now, now, one last thing I want to talk about. Um, with every lesson from this point onwards, I'd love to be able to suggest an album to listen to or a piece of music. Listening to jazz, some great musicians are out there. We can learn so much. It really accelerates our playing. So this week I'm going to suggest John Coltrane's Love Supreme album. You may not have heard that one. Uh, it's influenced so many great jazz players when they talk about their favorite album that really influenced them. This is the piece. This is the album. It's really different because it's just four movements all connected. It's a suite of pieces. Um, it's really unique, but it does make use of pentatonic scales in this piece. So it might be use a, a good listen for that purpose alone. But it's a very creative piece of music. Um, just have a listen to John Coltrane and some of the greatest musicians on there he's working with. So that's Love Supreme by John Coltrane. I'll put a link on the website and you can find that and maybe a little information about the, the, the album as well. So enjoy that and I continue to do your practicing on the lesson three to make sure everything's fluid. If you really want to take your playing to another level, those pentatonics get the semi-quavers worked out. I'll give that in practice myself for next week and then we're ready to move on. So I look forward to seeing you in lesson three. Take care, bye now.